I smoothed my blouse over my growing belly, taking a deep breath before stepping into the kitchen. The aroma of roasting chicken filled the air, but the tension was even thicker. There you are, Annabelle, Eleanor's voice cut through the room like a knife. I was beginning to wonder if you'd forgotten how to tell time. I forced a smile. Sorry, Eleanor. I was just finishing up some work calls. My mother-in-law's lips pursed as she eyed my swollen abdomen. Humph. I suppose that's more important than helping prepare dinner for your husband. Before I could respond, Sam walked in, his tie loosened after a long day at the office. Something smells amazing, he said, kissing my cheek. Eleanor beamed. Well, someone had to make sure you had a proper meal waiting for you. I bit my tongue, reminding myself that this was temporary. Eleanor was only staying with us for a few weeks while her house was being renovated. I could handle this. So, Annabelle, Eleanor continued, her tone deceptively sweet. Have you given any more thought to quitting your job once the baby arrives? A child needs its mother at home, you know. Sam's eyes darted between us. Mom, we've talked about this. Annabelle loves her work, and we've already arranged for childcare. I'm sure she does love her work, Eleanor said, patting my arm condescendingly. But some sacrifices must be made for family. Isn't that right, dear? I took another deep breath. Actually, Eleanor, I— The timer on the oven buzzed, cutting me off. Eleanor clapped her hands. Oh, that'll be the rolls. Annabelle, be a dear and take them out, would you? And mind you, don't burn yourself. In your condition, you need to be extra careful. I gritted my teeth and moved toward the oven, but Sam intercepted me. I've got it, honey. Why don't you sit down? As I lowered myself into a chair, Eleanor tisked. Really, Annabelle, you should be more mindful of your appearance. That blouse is straining at the buttons. We'll need to go shopping for some proper maternity clothes. Mom, Sam warned, but Eleanor waved him off. I'm only trying to help Samuel. Someone needs to guide this girl. Heaven knows she needs it. The room spun slightly, and I gripped the edge of the table. Excuse me, I muttered, pushing myself up. I need some air. I hurried out to the back porch, gulping in the cool evening breeze. Tears pricked at my eyes, but I blinked them away. I wouldn't give Eleanor the satisfaction. The door creaked open behind me, and Sam's warm hand settled on my shoulder. I'm sorry about that, he said softly. You know how she can be. I turned to face him, my voice low. Sam, I don't know how much more of this I can take. It's only been a week, and I feel like I'm losing my mind. He pulled me into a hug. I know. I know. I'll talk to her again. She'll come around eventually. But even as he said it, I could hear the doubt in his voice. Eleanor had never approved of me, and now with the baby coming, her criticisms had only intensified. The sound of breaking glass from inside made us both jump. Eleanor's shrill voice called out, Oh, Samuel! Come quick! Annabelle left a mess in here. Sam's shoulders sagged. I'd better go see what that's about. Will you be okay out here for a minute? I nodded, watching him disappear back into the house. As the door closed behind him, I clenched my fists at my sides. Something had to change. I couldn't keep living like this, constantly walking on eggshells in my own home. A chill ran down my spine as a thought occurred to me. If Eleanor wouldn't back down on her own— Maybe it was time I took matters into my own hands. The question was, how far was I willing to go to reclaim my life and protect my family? I woke to the sound of hushed voices drifting up from downstairs. Glancing at the clock, I saw it was barely 6 a.m. Sam's side of the bed was empty, still warm. With a sigh, I hauled myself up, curiosity overriding my desire to stay in bed. As I crept down the stairs, Eleanor's voice became clearer. Samuel, darling, I've been thinking— my house renovations are taking longer than expected. Perhaps it would be best if I just stayed here permanently. My heart dropped to my stomach. This couldn't be happening. Mom, Sam's voice was strained. We talked about this. It's not practical long term. Annabelle and I need our space, especially with the baby coming. Nonsense, Eleanor's tone sharpened. You'll need all the help you can get. Annabelle clearly isn't prepared for motherhood. Why, just look at how she's been neglecting the house lately. I gripped the banister, willing myself to stay silent. That's not fair, Mom. Annabelle's been working hard, and the pregnancy. Oh, please, when I was pregnant with you, I never let it slow me down. That girl needs to toughen up. Unable to listen any more, I stepped into view. Good morning, I said, my voice icier than I intended. Sam's face paled. Honey, 
I didn't realize you were up. Eleanor's lips curved into a saccharine smile. Annabelle, dear, we were just discussing some changes around here. I heard, I said flatly. Eleanor, I appreciate your offer, but Sam's right, we need our space. Her eyes narrowed. Well, I never. After all I've done for you both. Samuel, are you going to let her speak to me this way? Sam looked between us, clearly torn. Mom, Annabelle didn't mean— Oh, I meant it, I interrupted, surprising even myself. Eleanor, this is our home. You can't just decide to move in without consulting us. Eleanor's face reddened. I see. Well, if that's how you feel, perhaps I should just leave now. Although I don't know where I'll go, with my house in such a state. Sam's shoulders slumped. Mom, don't be dramatic. Of course you can stay until the renovations are done. Right, Annabelle? I felt the fight drain out of me. Fine, I muttered, turning away. I need to get ready for work. As I headed back upstairs, I heard Eleanor's triumphant whisper. There, there, Samuel. I'm sure she'll come around eventually. The rest of the morning passed in a blur of tension. By the time I was ready to leave, Sam was already gone, having left early to avoid the traffic. I found Eleanor in the kitchen, rearranging my carefully organized cabinets. Honestly, Annabelle, she said without turning around, I don't know how you find anything in this mess. Taking a deep breath, I grabbed my keys. I'll be home late tonight. I have a client dinner. Eleanor spun to face me, eyes wide with disapproval. You can't be serious. In your condition? What will people think? They'll think I'm a professional doing my job, I snapped. Goodbye, Eleanor. As I pulled out of the driveway, my phone buzzed with a text from Sam. Sorry about this morning. We'll talk tonight. Love you. I tossed the phone aside without replying. This situation was spiraling out of control, and I wasn't sure how much more I could take. Throughout the day, my mind raced with possibilities. Maybe I could convince Sam to put his foot down with Eleanor. Or perhaps I could find her a nice apartment nearby, anything to get her out of our house. By the time I returned home that evening, I had steeled myself for another confrontation. But as I walked through the door, I froze. The living room had been completely rearranged. My favorite reading chair was gone, replaced by an antique rocker I'd never seen before. Family photos that once graced the mantle had been swapped out for portraits of Eleanor and Sam. Surprise! Eleanor's voice rang out from behind me. I thought it was time this place had a woman's touch. Don't you love it? I turned slowly, meeting Sam's apologetic gaze over his mother's shoulder. In that moment, I knew. This was war, and Eleanor had just fired the first shot. I stared at the clock, willing the hands to move faster. It was only 2 p.m., but I was already exhausted. Eleanor's constant hovering and helpful suggestions were grating on my last nerve. Annabelle, dear, Eleanor's voice floated in from the kitchen. Don't you think it's time you started dinner? Sam will be home soon, and you know how he likes his meals on time. I gritted my teeth. Eleanor, I told you, I have a work deadline. Sam and I agreed I'd order takeout tonight. She appeared in the doorway, hands on her hips. Takeout? Again? Really, Annabelle, I don't know how you expect to be a good wife and mother with that attitude. Before I could respond, my phone buzzed. It was Sam. Hey, honey, Mom called. She said you're too busy to cook. Want me to pick up something on the way home? I closed my eyes, counting to ten. No, Sam. I told your mother I'd order in. I've got it covered. Oh. He paused. Well, maybe we should just let Mom handle dinner. You know how much she enjoys cooking for us. The familiar ache of frustration settled in my chest. Fine, I said, my voice flat. Whatever you think is best. I hung up without waiting for his response. Eleanor's smug smile made my blood boil. There, isn't that better? She cooed. Now why don't you go lie down? You look positively dreadful. I stood up, gathering my laptop. I have work to do, Eleanor. Please, just leave me alone for a while. As I retreated to our bedroom, I heard her muttering about ungrateful daughters-in-law and poor Samuel. Hours later, I emerged to find Sam and Eleanor chatting happily at the dinner table. The smell of pot roast, Sam's favorite, filled the air. There she is, Eleanor exclaimed. We were beginning to think you'd sleep through dinner. Sam looked up, his expression a mix of concern and annoyance. Everything okay, honey? Mom said you weren't feeling well. I plastered on a smile. I'm fine, just busy with work. As I sat down, Eleanor leaned in conspiratorially. You know, Samuel, I've been thinking. 
Perhaps Annabelle should consider cutting back her hours. It's clearly taking a toll on her health and our family time. Sam nodded thoughtfully. You might have a point, Mom. What do you think, Annabelle? I stared at them both, incredulous. You can't be serious. My job is important to me, and we need my income. Eleanor waved her hand dismissively. Nonsense. Samuel makes more than enough to support you both, and once the baby comes, you'll want to be home anyway. That's not your decision to make, I snapped, pushing away from the table. And it's certainly not a conversation we're having right now. Sam reached for my hand. Honey, calm down. We're just talking about options. I yanked my hand away. No, Sam. Your mother is trying to control our lives, and you're letting her. Eleanor's eyes widened in faux innocence. I'm only trying to help, dear. There's no need to get so emotional. It must be the pregnancy hormones. Something inside me snapped. Stop it. Just stop. This is my house, my marriage, my life. You don't get to make these decisions for us. The room fell silent. Sam looked shocked, while Eleanor's face crumpled into tears. How could you speak to me that way? She wailed. After everything I've done for you both? Sam immediately moved to comfort her. It's okay, Mom. Annabelle didn't mean it, did you, honey? I stood there, trembling with anger and disbelief. In that moment, I realized I was completely alone in this fight. Without another word, I turned and walked out of the house, ignoring Sam's calls behind me. As I got into my car, my phone buzzed with a text from my best friend, Lisa. Girls' night tomorrow? You look like you could use a break. I typed back a quick reply. Absolutely. And Lisa? I need your help with something. It's time to take back control of my life. As I drove away, a plan began to form in my mind. Eleanor might have won this battle, but the war was far from over. I sat in the doctor's office, my heart racing as I waited for the results. Sam squeezed my hand, his presence both comforting and irritating. After our fight last night, he'd been walking on eggshells around me. The door opened and Dr. Chen walked in, a smile on her face. Congratulations, Annabelle and Sam. You're having a girl. For a moment, pure joy washed over me. A daughter. I looked at Sam, seeing my happiness mirrored in his eyes. A girl? He whispered, awe in his voice. That's amazing, honey. As we left the clinic, reality started to creep back in. We should tell your mother, I said, trying to keep my tone neutral. Sam nodded, pulling out his phone. I'll call her now. I She'll be thrilled. I bit my tongue, not wanting to burst his bubble. We drove home in silence, the weight of impending confrontation hanging over us. Eleanor was waiting at the door when we arrived, practically vibrating with excitement. Well, what's the news? Sam beamed. It's a girl, Mom. We're having a little girl. I watched Eleanor's face carefully, catching the flicker of disappointment before she masked it with a smile. Oh, well, that's lovely, dear. I'm sure she'll be beautiful. Sam, oblivious to the undercurrent, hugged his mother. Isn't it great? I can't wait to meet her. Eleanor patted his back, her eyes meeting mine over his shoulder. Yes, of course. Although, you know, there's still a chance the doctors could be wrong. We shouldn't get too attached to the idea of a girl just yet. I felt my blood pressure rising. The ultrasound was very clear, Eleanor. We're having a daughter. She waved her hand dismissively. Oh, I know, dear. I'm just saying, it's best to be prepared for anything. After all, a boy would be so much easier to raise, especially for a career woman like yourself. Sam finally seemed to sense the tension. Mom, come on. We're excited about our little girl. Eleanor sighed dramatically. I suppose we'll make do. At least there's still hope for grandchildren after this one. What's that supposed to mean? I snapped, unable to contain myself any longer. She blinked innocently. Nothing, dear. I just think it's important to keep trying until you get it right, that's all. I opened my mouth to retort, but Sam cut in. Okay, let's all calm down. This is supposed to be a happy day. Eleanor nodded, her voice syrupy sweet. Of course, Samuel. I'm sorry if I upset you, Annabelle. Pregnancy hormones can make one so sensitive. I clenched my fists, fighting the urge to scream. I need some air, I muttered, heading for the back porch. As I stood outside, trying to calm my racing heart, I heard Eleanor's voice drift through the open window. Samuel, darling, I've been thinking. Perhaps we should convert that home office into a proper nursery. Blue walls would be lovely, don't you think? Mom, Sam's voice was strained. We just found out it's a girl. Why would we paint the nursery blue? Oh, you know, Eleanor replied, just in case, and blue is such a calming color for any baby. 
I'd heard enough. I stormed back inside, finding them in the living room. That's it, I said, my voice shaking. I can't do this anymore. Sam looked alarmed. Honey, what? No, Sam. Your mother has made it clear she doesn't want our daughter. Well, guess what? This little girl is coming whether she likes it or not, and I won't have her growing up feeling unwanted in her own home. Eleanor gasped. How dare you? I would never. Save it. I cut her off. I'm done trying to placate you. It's time for you to leave, Eleanor. Now. The room fell silent. Sam looked between us, clearly torn. Annabelle, maybe we should all just take a breath and... No, I said firmly. It's me or her, Sam. You need to choose. As I stood there, heart pounding, I realized this was it. The moment that would define our future. And for the sake of our daughter, I was ready to fight with everything I had. I stood in the kitchen, my back aching as I scrubbed the already spotless counters. At seven months pregnant, every movement was a challenge, but Eleanor's critical eye missed nothing. Annabelle, dear, her voice rang out from the living room. When you're done there, the windows could use a good cleaning, and don't forget to dust the bookshelves. I gripped the sponge tighter, fighting back tears of frustration. After my ultimatum last month, Sam had convinced me to give his mother one last chance. But instead of improving, the situation had only gotten worse. Annabelle? Eleanor appeared in the doorway. Did you hear me? The windows won't clean themselves. I took a deep breath. Eleanor, I've been cleaning all morning. I need to rest. Her eyes narrowed. Rest? When I was pregnant with Samuel, I never stopped working. You young women today are so delicate. Before I could respond, a sharp pain shot through my abdomen. I gasped, clutching my belly. Eleanor rolled her eyes. Oh, stop being so dramatic. A little housework never hurt anyone. The pain intensified, and I felt a trickle of liquid down my leg. Panic set in as I realized what was happening. Eleanor, something's wrong. I think I need to go to the hospital. She waved her hand dismissively. Nonsense. It's probably just Braxton Hicks. Why don't you lie down for a bit? But first, finish up in here. I stared at her in disbelief. Are you serious? I'm telling you something's wrong. Fine, she huffed. If you insist on making a fuss, I'll drive you. But really, Annabelle, this attention-seeking behavior is getting old. The drive to the hospital was excruciating. Eleanor complained the entire way about the inconvenience while I tried to focus on my breathing through the pain. At the hospital, the doctors confirmed my fears. I was in preterm labor. Mrs. Thompson, the doctor said gravely, we need to stop these contractions immediately. Your baby is at risk if born this early. As they hooked me up to various machines, I called Sam in tears. Sam, please come quickly. The baby. I'm on my way, he said, his voice tight with worry. Hours passed in a blur of pain and fear. When Sam finally arrived, Eleanor cornered him before he could reach me. Samuel, I heard her say, this is exactly what I was worried about. Annabelle's been pushing herself too hard at work. If she'd listened to me about staying home, I couldn't hear Sam's response, but moments later he was by my side, his face pale with concern. Honey, I'm here. Everything's going to be okay. As another contraction hit, I gripped his hand. Sam, promise me something. Anything, he said. If something happens, if you have to choose, choose the baby. Promise me. His eyes widened in alarm. Annabelle, don't talk like that. You're both going to be fine. Just then, Eleanor bustled in. Oh, Samuel, there you are. I've been talking to the nurses, and they agree with me that Annabelle needs to cut back on work. In fact, I've taken the liberty of calling her office to let them know she'll be taking an extended leave. The monitors beeped wildly as my heart rate spiked. You did what? I gasped. Sam looked bewildered. Mom, you had no right to do that. Eleanor patted his arm. Now, now. Someone had to take charge. It's clear Annabelle can't be trusted to make sensible decisions. As they argued, another pain tore through me, more intense than before. The room spun, and I heard the doctor's voice, urgent and concerned. We're losing the baby's heartbeat. We need to perform an emergency C-section now. In that moment, as they rushed me to the operating room, I made a decision. If we survived this, things would have to change. I couldn't let Eleanor's toxic presence endanger my child any longer. As the anesthesia took hold, my last thought was a silent promise to my unborn daughter. I will protect you, no matter what it takes. The rain lashed against the windows as I waddled around the kitchen, my nine-month pregnant belly making every movement a challenge. 
Eleanor sat at the table, tapping her fingers impatiently. "'Annabelle, dear,' she called, her voice sickly sweet. "'Have you forgotten about Margaret?' I gritted my teeth. "'No, Eleanor, I told you. I'm not comfortable driving in this storm.' She clicked her tongue. "'Nonsense. It's just a little rain. Margaret is expecting us. Then why don't you go pick her up?' I snapped, my patience wearing thin. Eleanor's eyes narrowed. "'You know I don't drive at night. Besides, it would be good for you to get out of the house. You've been so... lethargic lately.' I bit back a retort, remembering the doctor's warnings about stress. The baby could come any day now, and I needed to stay calm. Just then, Sam walked in, shaking off his umbrella. Wow, it's really coming down out there. Eleanor pounced immediately. Samuel, darling, please tell Annabelle she's being ridiculous. She refuses to pick up poor Margaret in this little drizzle. Sam's eyes darted between us, his face a mask of uncertainty. Uh, well... Maybe it's not the best idea for Annabelle to drive right now, Mom. The roads are pretty slick. I felt a surge of gratitude, but it was short-lived. Oh, for heaven's sake, Eleanor huffed. When I was pregnant with you, I drove through blizzards. This generation is so soft. The familiar ache of frustration bloomed in my chest. Eleanor, I said no. End of discussion. Her face hardened. I see. Well, I suppose I'll just have to call Margaret and tell her that my daughter-in-law is too selfish to help an old friend in need. Something inside me snapped. Fine. You want me to go so badly? I'll go. Sam stepped forward, alarmed. Honey, no, you don't have to. But I was already grabbing my keys, anger propelling me forward. No, Sam, your mother is right. I'm just being selfish, aren't I? God forbid I put my own safety and our child's first. Eleanor's smug smile only fueled my rage as I stormed out into the downpour. The wind whipped around me, soaking me to the bone in seconds. As I fumbled with the car door, a sharp pain shot through my abdomen. I gasped, doubling over. Sam's voice called out from the porch. Annabelle, come back inside. I straightened up, determined to prove Eleanor wrong. Ignoring the growing discomfort, I climbed into the driver's seat. The roads were treacherous, visibility near zero. Every few minutes, another contraction would hit, each one stronger than the last. Panic began to set in as I realized I might have made a terrible mistake. Halfway to Margaret's, a particularly intense pain caused me to swerve. The car skidded on the wet pavement, spinning out of control. I screamed as we careened off the road coming to a jarring stop in a ditch. For a moment, all I could hear was that the pounding of my heart and the relentless rain. Then, a gush of warm liquid between my legs confirmed my worst fears. My water had broken. Hands shaking, I reached for my phone, only to find it had been thrown from its holder in the crash. It lay on the passenger floor, screen shattered. Another contraction hit, this one so powerful it took my breath away. I knew with terrifying certainty that the baby was coming, and I was alone in a storm with no way to call for help. As the pain intensified, Eleanor's words echoed in my head. You're too soft, too selfish. Anger surged through me, mixing with fear and determination. No, I wouldn't let her win. I wouldn't let her put my baby in danger ever again. With trembling hands, I pushed open the car door. If help wouldn't come to me, I'd find it myself. As I stepped out into the raging storm, one thought crystallized in my mind. This ends now. Eleanor had to go, no matter what it took. Lightning illuminated the road ahead as I took my first stumbling steps. Whatever happened next, I knew my life would never be the same. I stumbled through the front door, drenched and shaking, my contractions coming fast and hard. Sam rushed to me his face a mask of panic. Annabelle, what happened? Where's the car? I clutched my belly, gasping through the pain. Crashed. Baby coming. Eleanor appeared behind him, her eyes widening. Good heavens, what have you done now, Annabelle? Sam helped me to the couch, barking orders for towels and hot water. As he dialed 911, I grabbed his arm. Sam, I panted, the diary, in my nightstand. Get it. He looked confused but nodded, dashing upstairs. Eleanor hovered nearby, her lips pursed in disapproval. Really, Annabelle, she tutted, causing all this fuss. In my day, we simply got on with it. Another contraction hit, and I cried out. Through the haze of pain, I saw Sam return, a small leather-bound book in his hand. What's this about, honey? he asked, kneeling beside me. I reached for the diary with trembling hands. Read it, I gasped. All of it. As Sam flipped through the pages, his expression changed from confusion to shock, then to anger. 
Eleanor, sensing something was amiss, tried to peer over his shoulder. "'What's that you've got there, Samuel?' He jerked away from her, his voice low and dangerous. "'Is this true, Mom? Did you really say these things to Annabelle?' Eleanor's face paled. "'I'm sure it's all a misunderstanding. You know how sensitive she can be.' Sam stood abruptly, his fists clenched. "'Sensitive? It says here, you told her she'd be a terrible mother, that our daughter would be better off.' He couldn't finish the sentence, his voice choked with emotion. I reached for his hand, drawing strength from his touch. "'It's all true.' I said, locking eyes with Eleanor. Every word. Eleanor's demeanor shifted, her eyes flashing with defiance. Now see here, I was only trying to help. Someone had to prepare this girl for motherhood. She's clearly not cut out for it. Sam's face contorted with rage. Not cut out for it? She's been enduring your abuse for months, all while growing our child. If anyone's not cut out for this family, it's you. A particularly strong contraction gripped me, and I cried out in agony. Sam immediately turned his attention back to me, his anger giving way to concern. The ambulance is on its way, honey. Just hold on. Eleanor, sensing her control slipping, made one last desperate attempt. Samuel, you can't possibly believe her over your own mother. I've only ever wanted what's best for you. Best for me, Sam roared, rounding on her. You've been tormenting my wife, endangering our child, and manipulating me at every turn. How is that what's best? As they argued, the pain intensified. I felt a sudden urge to push, panic rising in my chest. Sam, I gasped. The baby? She's coming now. Everything became a blur of activity. Sam positioned himself to catch the baby, while Eleanor fluttered uselessly in the background, alternating between offers of help and muttered criticisms. With one final, excruciating push, our daughter entered the world, her cries filling the room. Sam's face shone with tears and joy as he placed her on my chest. She's perfect, he whispered, kissing my forehead. In that moment, looking at our beautiful child, I felt a surge of fierce protectiveness. I turned to Eleanor, my voice steady despite my exhaustion. You need to leave, now. She gaped at me, then at Sam, clearly expecting him to intervene. But he stood firm, cradling our daughter— you heard her, Mom. It's time for you to go. Eleanor's face crumpled, tears welling in her eyes. But where will I go? As if on cue the doorbell rang, Sam answered it to find Margaret, Eleanor's friend, standing there with a confused expression. I got tired of waiting, she explained, taking in the chaotic scene. What on earth is going on here? I locked eyes with Sam, a silent understanding passing between us. This was our chance to end Eleanor's reign of terror, once and for all. Taking a deep breath, I prepared to reveal everything to Margaret, knowing that the next few moments would determine the future of our family. Margaret stepped inside, her eyes widening as she took in the scene, me on the couch with a newborn, Sam standing protectively nearby, and Eleanor looking like a cornered animal. Eleanor, Margaret said slowly, what have you done? Before Eleanor could respond, I spoke up, my voice surprisingly steady. Margaret, I'm glad you're here. There's something you need to know. Over the next few minutes, with Sam's support, I recounted the months of torment we'd endured at Eleanor's hands. Margaret listened, her expression shifting from shock to disgust. Is this true, Eleanor? She finally asked, turning to her friend. Eleanor's face crumpled. I... I was only trying to help. Annabelle clearly needed guidance. Guidance? Sam interrupted, his voice tight with anger. You call endangering my wife and child guidance? Margaret shook her head, disappointment etched on her face. Oh, Eleanor, I had no idea you'd become so cruel. Eleanor's demeanor suddenly changed, her eyes flashing with defiance. You don't understand. I was protecting my son, my family legacy. This, this girl isn't good enough for him. The room fell silent, save for the soft coos of our newborn daughter. For relief, I looked down at her, then back at Eleanor, a newfound strength coursing through me. No, Eleanor, I said firmly. You're the one who isn't good enough. Not for Sam, not for this family, and certainly not for this precious little girl. Sam stepped forward, his jaw set. Mom, I've made my decision. You have two choices. Either move into a nursing home where you can get the help you clearly need, or live alone. But you're not welcome in our lives anymore. Eleanor's face paled. Samuel, you can't mean that. I'm your mother. A mother who nearly cost me everything I hold dear, Sam replied, his voice breaking. I'm sorry, but this is how it has to be. Margaret placed a gentle hand on Eleanor's arm. 
Come on, Eleanor, I'll help you pack your things. We'll figure this out together. As Margaret led a shell-shocked Eleanor upstairs, Sam turned to me, tears in his eyes. I'm so sorry, Annabelle, for everything. I reached for his hand, pulling him close. We got through it together, that's what matters. The next hour passed in a blur of activity. Paramedics arrived to check on me and the baby, pronouncing us both healthy despite the dramatic birth. Eleanor left with Margaret, her final glare a mixture of anger and defeat. As night fell and quiet settled over the house, Sam and I sat together, marveling at our daughter. She needs a name, Sam whispered, stroking her tiny cheek. I smiled, a sense of peace washing over me. How about Victoria? It means victory. Sam's eyes lit up. Victoria, it's perfect. Looking at our little family, I felt a profound shift within me. The months of struggle and pain had forged me into someone stronger, someone who would never again let anyone threaten her happiness or her family's well-being. You know, I said softly, in a way we should thank Eleanor. Sam looked at me, puzzled. Thank her? For what? For showing us how strong we are together, for teaching us the kind of parents we don't want to be. He nodded, understanding dawning in his eyes. You're right. We'll do better. We'll be better. As Victoria drifted off to sleep in my arms, I felt a surge of hope for our future. The storm had passed, literally and figuratively, leaving behind a family stronger and more united than ever before. Eleanor's reign of terror was over, and in its wake a new chapter was beginning, one filled with love, understanding, and the unbreakable bond of a family that had weathered the worst and come out triumphant. I kissed Victoria's forehead, then leaned into Sam's embrace. Whatever challenges lay ahead, I knew we'd face them together, our little victory leading the way.